How's it going, party people? So, Starfield Creation Kit, huh? It's out. Since I've been using it for a bit, I thought I'd share a few tips uh, about it really briefly to get you started. There's quite a few things that I thought I'd showcase if you're building locations, uh, doing stuff in the render window that are new and exciting and worth knowing. First bit is that the render window now can be turned uh, to dark mode, plastic dark. Uh, it's experimental, it's not fully implemented, it doesn't work 100%. I'm not going to switch now because it'll just go back and forth, I don't want to do that. But you can use the plastic dark, you can dock windows now, and you can save your layouts. So you can make whatever you want here. And once it's docked and you got it the way you want it, you can save it. Save layout as. Come back later. You don't have to worry about it. Just load the, load the uh, preset up. You're back where you started. Fantastic. Moving around in the render window has also changed. Previously, we would uh, select objects and then uh, sort of rotate the camera around them holding shift. Now holding shift you can actually use the WASD keys, the WASD, to move around the render window. You can use Q and E to go up and down and the WASD keys to do sort of a fl free fly cam that you are used to seeing in, in f like for example, photo modes in games. If the camera is too fast for you, hold shift and mouse scroll will speed up the camera or slow it down. Mouse scrolling will make you go faster and slower. It's very powerful and you can do it. You can change the speed while you are moving. So you can always adjust it to where you want it to be. Pretty cool, huh? So you don't have to be just stuck with this camera mode anymore. Just use those VATS keys and Q and E. As for actually building things in the render window, now that you know how to move around in it, uh, there are a few good tips that I can share. If you're cluttering places and you want to make things static so that the player can't pick it up, you can make pack-ins. I'm going to select all these sandwiches. I'm going to let the havoc settle them. Now I have a sandwich crate. Well, I would have a sandwich crate if I hadn't exploded it. It's all right, guys. Uh, the sandwiches have been tamed, right? So I have the sandwiches here the way I want them. I have selected all of them that I want to uh, put in this static collection. So two things you can do. You can uh, create a pack-in and this pack-in will spawn all of these individual sandwiches and the, the crate uh, into the cell. You name it, Ellie, crate, sandwiches, whatever you want. There's two types of packings now. You can create this one that I'm doing now, and it will the player will be able to pick up all the sandwiches. It will spawn them in the cell. You can pull the pack in from the object window into here, um, and it will be, be part of the environment. Or you can create an instanced static, which makes it like a static collection. Same, this was in Fallout 4 as well. You can create a static collection, and it will be non-interactive. So now we have this. You you can't select any of the individual ones anymore. It's a it's a full one one object that you can place. Once it's in, come on. Once it's in and one, once it's created, where is? You can find it on the packings. It's here, and you can pull it into the cell. Fun. 
they are really powerful. I'm not gonna get into it more, but but it's a thing. It's a whole thing. Speaking of static objects, you know how sometimes you want to use furniture or food or things as environmental storytelling pieces, but you don't want the player to be able to interact with them. As you can see, there is a marker on this, so it's a furniture object that the player and the NPCs can use. But what if you want to make it lean? As you can see, the, the marker disappeared entirely when I rotated it, because it means that the NPCs can't touch it anymore. You can't use it but you can take it a bit further so it doesn't say chair anymore by opening the reference edit window and ch selecting non-interactive this will basically render the object static you cannot click it if it's an activator if it's water let's say you don't in, in fallout you would drink water if you want to make turn water non-drinkable it's not a thing in starfield but uh, as an example for an activator non-interactive now, if I um, move it back so that, in theory, the NPCs could interact with it, and I turn on the markers, you can see that the markers are not there. Instead, and now it's back. Uh, instead of making a new form, like copying the model path and making a new static form under statics, you can just tick that box, and anything you want to make static is static, be it a, a sandwich, or a water, or a bottle of beer. Easier than making things static and making new forms, you can just use that. As for uh, building, as for building uh, things in the render window, in Fallout 4, they introduced material swaps. You could hot swap, basically textures of objects in the render window without creating new objects. So only this instance of this reference would change its texture instead of you having to make a new one. They took it a bit further in Starfield Creation Kit, where you you can even select the parts of the object that you want to turn uh, the change the color of. For example, this fridge door. Uh, one hold Alt, hold Alt and Shift, and use the mouse scroll. It will scroll through this list of objects. Depending on what kind of object you have, there will be more uh, pieces that get highlighted. But here I want to change the door, yeah? The, so the fridge has a material swap. And once you've uh, on the list, you've highlighted in green the thing you want. Hold Control and Shift. So first Alt Shift, then Control Shift. Control Shift and mouse scroll will scroll through all, uh, or all available materials. It's pretty cool, huh? You can select objects. Highlight the piece you want to change, and then you can go through. It's very easy and powerful. What if, but what if I want to change this crate that I already put in the backpacking? This is a static object. You can. You can also do it for packings. The list is long. It has all the pieces that are material swappable. It has container sides, container details. Even has the sandwiches. And you can Alt and Shift the list. Highlight the one you want to change, and you can see that the material is changing. You can select the sides and make them different. It's very powerful. You really want to take advantage of this. It can feel a little confusing at first, because when you're scrolling through this menu and nothing happens, you're like, but I want to material swap. No, this just selects, Alt and Shift just selects the thing you want to change. And Control Shift changes the whole. You can select multiple objects, like let's say I want this entire fridge to change. Now I am selected the sides, the fridge, and the doors. And now it's all selected, everything is highlighted, and I can change it at the same time. Instead of doing every each of them separately. You can, you can if you want. You can have different colored doors. But there you go. It's pretty clever, huh? Was that five? I thought I was promising you guys five tips. Anyway, I will be making more Starfield tutorials. I will be streaming on Twitch and YouTube, uh, making Starfield mods. So if you're not subscribed yet, if you're not following, like and subscribe, please. Click that notification bell. Follow me on social so you'll know when I post new stuff. Uh, and welcome to Starfield Creation.